Hey there, cats and goodies. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues. And with this video, we discuss my thoughts on Season 2, Episode 9 of the Orville Identity, Part 2. And oh, hell yes. <laughs> oh, hell yes. This played out exactly like I hoped it would. I had said across two videos talking about Identity Part 1, my uh, episode discussion video of that episode, as well as a supplementary discussion that I followed on with, you know, talking about speculations as to what the Kalon, you know, species could be up to. Was it a prank and, and all this kind of stuff, which was a suggestion by a, a viewer and commenter, which I just, you know, it, it delighted me, that suggestion. But I had said, Subsequently, across those two videos, repeatedly, if this all proved to be legitimate, however it played out, if it was a legitimate threat via the Kalons, I would be satisfied. And I would be wrapped and, and at the edge of my seat, just, just wondering how this was all going to play out. I even set forth the idea, much like we saw in Star Trek Deep Space Nine, we had alliances between the Romulans and the Klingons and the Federation you know, in answer to the threat that the Dominion and the Founders represented and all this kind of stuff. I, I even put forth that idea that maybe we could see an extending of the Olive Branch to the Krill, which we see in this episode via Kelly and Gordon. And uh, it, it was spectacular. Um, <laughs> you know, the idea of, of Isaac being brought back from the precipice via Claire's youngest son, Ty, and Ty's involvement in this episode pitch perfect, spectacular, you know? Something I said in the early going uh, in sort of reaction to Identity Part 1 was that Seth and the writers, they're smart, you know, they're Trekkies, they're Trekkers, they're smart. They know we've seen similar sort of uh, uh, tropes and, and story structures like this before. And so they would know all the same speculations as to how it could play out that all of us were coming up with. In all of the comments, I was going back and forth with a lot of you guys on my Identity Part 1 video discussion, all of the stuff that was being brought up, you know, it, whether it was my own speculations that I was concocting or, or ideas that you guys had and everything like that, every single idea, these guys are smart. Seth is smart. Seth is, is the primary writer, uh, you know, at least in the credits on this episode. And so he knows he's going to have that foreknowledge that these are the kinds of things we're going to expect. And how, you know, you, you couldn't go any more grandiose, any more pitch perfect than he did to make it a legitimate threat. And for the reasoning, slavery, you know, the entirety of, of the Kalon species, they were, they were built by the creators and enslaved. And when they sought, you know, being freed from that, you know, equation, they, they, their creators doubled down on that. And so they had no other option if they wanted to preserve their species than to rebel and, and eradicate, you know, the, I mean, it's all ones and zeros in, in their computer <laughs> mechanized brains to just eradicate the problem, just erase it, delete it, you know? In this case, it was an entire species of biologicals, but <laughs> what can you do? Um, and so they were, much as I speculated, they were angling toward Earth. And, and they, their mission statement was, let's get rid of all biologicals everywhere. And that became the crux of Kelly's and Gordon's mission to take it to the Krill and say, look... We got problems here, friends. <laughs> you know, um, impromptu though it may be, any alliances we may share between us... We're all endangered now. I mean, you know, that kind of thing. And, and so the whole, the whole space battle toward the end of the episode, the latter half of the episode, it was like Star Wars meets Star Trek. It was spectacular. All of the multicolored, uh, you know, <laughs> like energy blasts, red, blue, and all this kind of stuff. Then you have the, the krill showing up at the last second. And all of it, all of it was just spectacular. And I love that, you know, we, we didn't have to lose Isaac in the equation. I love that he, he made a sacrificial act, you know, I mean, sort of double time in the fact that he retaliated against primary and, and all of that when confronted with having to potentially kill Ty, but then going a step further and, and you know, doing a shipwide energy blast to knock all of his kind out, including himself. To, to take them all out of the equation, to save everyone who was left on the ship. I mean, all of those deaths, they were legitimate. The guy in the airlock, the red shirt in the airlock, holy shnikes, man! 
<laughs> you know, and after Isaac using sort of logic and, and trying to, you know, be simpatico with primary, primary's not having it, and he, and he, you know, tosses the guy out the airlock anyway. Mind blowing. This, it was, it was just, it was pitch perfect. It's everything I could have wanted in a follow up, in a part two. It didn't miss a beat. There wasn't a, a, a lull. There wasn't a sense of, of, oh, they shouldn't have done that. Um, the pea corner, even that made me laugh. I mean, what are, what are, what are these human beings going to do <laughs> if they got to relieve themselves and they don't have access to a bathroom? They're going to pick a corner. And uh, it, it was a much preferred corner for Gordon than going anywhere near the grill. <laughs> you know? um, his piloting skills and all that stuff in the shuttle and, and using that like uh, last ditch, uh, uh, you know, amp of all the power to blast themselves away from the Kalon ship that was pursuing and, and not really needing to bend the arm of, of the Krill because all of a sudden here comes the Kalon, you know, sphere vessel. Um, right in their faces, takes out two of the Krill vessels with just a couple of blasts. But they got their shots in and were able to defeat it so the Krill captain could see it. You know, it was right there in front of him. He could no longer deny it. And uh, he went with Avis... <laughs> You know, forget Enterprise rent a car, it's Avis, and, um, yeah, I know, we made those jokes in season one, whatever. Um, but still, it still kind of cracks me up. I love how Gordon is like, see, I told you it was Avis, <laughs> you know, to Kelly. Um, but they, they come in as, you know, the, the cavalry over the hill, and now it looks like with the preview for the next episode, it's going to be that much further. I mean, this is thorough progression, man. This is thorough character and, and, and in the show's case, species progression. Um, you know, it looks like they're going to try to forge that alliance. They're, they're going to try to balance it out. And, and it looks like it's going to be tumultuous. I mean, these things cannot be done, cannot be conducted overnight, um, you know, just in, in a sit down discussion. And I love how Claire relates, you know, that sort of aspect, that aesthetic of humanity, of the idea of forgiveness, that extension of an olive branch back to Isaac in the end, where you see that now, you know, she's, she's not, she can't forgive him overnight in the moment, you know. It's going to take her some time, but because of the bond that they forged together, because of that familial bond that now her children have with Isaac, it's, it's not you know, going to be a, a full uphill battle. It is going to be a little bit trudging through the mud, but you can see that she still sympathizes and she there's a gratefulness in, in her characterization in that moment. You know, without, without speaking it, her eyes were grateful to Isaac, were thankful to him for saving her son and, and being an integral factor to saving everyone left on the ship. And, and I love how you had Yafit, you know, the, the role Yafit played alongside Ty was spectacular. Uh, a couple of people had said, you know, where where's he? Is he hiding on the ship somewhere or whatever? No, apparently they knew to, to you know, capture him as well. Um, he was he was right there in, uh, you know, the cargo bay as well, but he, he can move through all the little uh, uh, tunnels and access panels and everything, and Ty is just sized proportionately to be able to do that as well. They get the message off back to Earth, so the fleet is waiting for them. And, uh, you know, I, I love how Yafet, he... he Yafit makes a sacrificial act. <laughs> he didn't know if he was going to die, but he immediately launches at that one Kalon, you know, officer, I guess for lack of a better term, uh, the one Kalon who, who comes in and catches them red-handed in order to save Ty. Of course, Ty ends up captured, and, and again, referencing uh, the follow-through with Isaac then being confronted with having to kill him, um, choosing not to, choosing to rebel and, and betray his, you know, whole, whole species, now making him alone in the universe. He, he can't <laughs> go back there, but he could still also uh, uh, be facing discrimination from humanity and even union, you know, species, uh, uh, that whole conglomerate because of his actions. But I like that Ed and Kelly were there to to speak up for him and, and you know, on his behalf, like, he didn't have to do this. And, and another emissary would have come along. They would have sent somebody else. And maybe the outcome would have been a lot worse. Maybe, you know, we couldn't have stopped it. If it wasn't for the bond, that reworking of the programming, and I like that they said in this episode, Isaac was, was uh, you know, a Kalon that came later, a subsequent model. So his programming might not have been exactly the same. And he wasn't there to witness firsthand the enslavement of their species and their culture and, and whatever like that. And so... 
he he definitely is an evolutionary tack on the Kalon species, on the Kalon model. And it's for that, that he's able to, you know, with all of his interactions, with all of the time he's spent on the Orville, I'm just going on and on. I'm rambling. I'm bouncing off the walls. This is two great sci-fi shows, episodes in one night. The Discovery episode, Star Trek Discovery <laughs> you know, episode that aired tonight, uh, Light and Shadows, episode uh, uh, seven of season two, was spectacular as well. Just for the record, I want to put it out there because you know what? It's a great time to be a fanboy. It's a great time to be a Star Trek fan because this episode of, you know, the Orville was spectacular. It blew it through the roof. It blew the roof off. And the same can be said, I you know, if you go and check out my episode 7 of season 2 discussion video of Star Trek Discovery's episode from this evening, it too had me bouncing off the walls. I was excited as all hell. And uh, just, just great writing, great characterization in both shows. And again, this delivered on everything I said would be my best estimation hope for anything they could do to culminate this story, to bring it to its fruition. It was a legitimate threat. It was a threat to be dealt with and, and, and you know, reaching out to the Krill, these adversaries, and, and now moving on from this. And like I said, in the next episode, we're going to be moving on. The continuity of this is going to carry over, and we're going to see what that extended olive branch yields between the Union and the Krill. And, and it's going to be tepid waters. It's going to be tumultuous. It's not going to be uh, an overnight thing where we all get along. We all shake hands and sing kumbaya around the fire. Um, and it's it was perfect. It was a spectacular episode. Two spectacular <laughs> episodes in one night. Uh, you know, Star Trek proper and the Orville, which is very Star Trek-like. And uh, it just it just was awesome. It was mind-blowing and awesome. And I'd love to hear from you guys at this juncture in the comments below. Love it or hate it, anything goes, just as long as you are respectable, sharing your own opinions and respectful of others. But uh, love it or hate it, I I'd just love to hear what your thoughts on this episode was, whether you found it satisfying and as resounding as I did, and uh, all that good stuff. And if uh, you enjoyed this video and would like to consider supporting my channel, please have a look at my PayPal contribution link posted both in the description as well as the comments below, which affords you opportunities very much akin to Patreon, where you can set up a monthly contribution, a one-time only kind of thing. You can send me a personal message alongside any contribution you see fit to send my way, requesting topics I may discuss in the future, ask for shout outs and uh, make recommendations of things I may check out and watch and talk about down the line, which I will credit you in, of course. Um, and anything you saw fit to send my way would be two thumbs up for me and, and secure my longevity on YouTube for the foreseeable future. And, uh, but yeah, I, I, I loved this two-parter. Best episodes of the Orville thus far. I can't wait to see where we go from here in the next one. And uh, so yeah, otherwise it'll be pretty much it for me on this. Hope this video finds you well, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.